Episode 21 of Ragna Crimson Season 1 continues following the battle between Ragna, Crimson, the Argentum Corps, and the Superior Dragons. While Chimera and another ally confront Borgias, Ragna and Camui's battle intervenes with theirs. Noticing Chimera and her ally are in danger, Ragna lends the two a hand. Then, Camui attacks Ragna, pushing him away from the battlefield. Although Borgias is immobilized by Ragna's Silverine, his dragon form sprouts new heads. Meanwhile, the Argentum Corps overwhelm Alto Zora with their combined might. Despite having the upper hand, the Argentum Corps morale dwindles briefly. During this occasion, Zora ponders if he'll ever achieve Teratectora's level of strength. With the thought of his deceased comrade flowing through his mind, Zora transforms into a more muscular and capable dragon. While Ragna and Kamui take their duel to outer space, we shift to Nazarena and Starlia observing the battle from afar. Starlia tells Nazarena to leave her be and assist the others with the dragons. Nazarena recalls her first encounter with Starlia when, when Starlia was younger. Although Nazarena acknowledges Starlia's disabilities, she mentions that Starlia is still around because others see value in her peculiar powers. After the flashback, Nazarena departs and plans to assist the others with the dragons. Next, we shift to Nebulum who senses Crimson nearby. He has a hunch Crimson's after Ultimatia but knows Ultimatia is in an alternate location. Although Nebulum isn't worried, Crimson starts to breach through Nebulum's barrier, causing him to panic. Before Nebulum is able to counter it, Slime appears next to him and absorbs him. Crimson appears behind Ultimatia and Nebulum calls out to her. Crimson damages Ultimatia with his firearm and uses his device to prevent Ultimatia's time manipulation powers from interfering with his ploy. Ultimatia transforms into a dragon. We cut to another instance involving Crimson. He holds a civil discussion with other versions of himself regarding Ragna and his true power. Afterward, Crimson grabs the heart in front of him and places it inside his body, causing him to transform. In his new state, Crimson uses his various weapons to immobilize Ultimatia. Before Crimson can deal a decisive blow to her, Ultimatia unleashes a powerful attack, engulfing the room in a large blow. Meanwhile, we shift to Argentum Corps battle with Zora. After Zora murders most of the Argentum Corps, he turns his attention toward Ike and tries murdering him. Fortunately, Fu protects Ike from Zora's assault. Fu injects himself with a concoction, allowing him to attain powers that are on par with the dragons. Despite putting in a decent effort against Zora, Fu gets knocked into a nearby gap. We shift to Shen, who lost an arm and a leg. Regardless of what he's lost, he still wants to provide his subordinates with aid. He notices Ragna and Kamui fighting in the sky. The chapter closes with Shen planning to help Ragna. The Episode Review Ragna Crimson chose to focus more on action rather than dialogue, giving viewers a thrilling and brutal fight between our hero's party and the superior dragons. While there were certain battles some fans won't care for here, others will like seeing each fight get its time to shine in the spotlight. Additionally, this episode carried some questionable content that leans toward the bonkers spectrum of things. Nevertheless, it'll be interesting to see how these bouts will close in the final episodes. Fights aside, it was nice getting a glimpse of Starlia and Nazarena's first encounter. While it had been great to see them spend time together outside of Starlia's room, fans will cherish seeing when and how the two met each other. Furthermore, it was nice seeing Slime get a victory in this chapter. Despite his comedic role, this chapter shows how vile and brutal slime can be when given the proper orders. Overall, this was a decent chapter of Ragna Crimson. It has its oddities and faults, but there's enough satisfying material present in it to keep audiences at bay.